So hey folks and welcome back to the channel. On today's video, as promised on the last video, I said I would go through my luggage setup on the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. I'll pop a picture up of the bike on the screen just now in touring mode and you can see how she looks. But also I wanted to dig into the whole luggage, what I pack for a long trip being two or three weeks or a short trip, albeit uh, a weekend away somewhere. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Um, so to start with, what I'm gonna go through is the hard pannier setup that I have on the Triumph Tiger. Um, when I bought this bike, it didn't have luggage, so I bought the Givi mono key single uh, racks and also uh, a rack for the top box, all by Givi. The top box that you see here is the Givi Dolomiti 30 litre top box. I didn't want a large top box on the bike and I'll show you why shortly. The side panniers, again, I wanted them to key in with the top box. These are the Givi uh, Dolomiti 30 litre hard cases. They're uh, top opening hard cases. What I like about these is they actually have a handle on top. So if you do need to uh, carry them into the hotel, it just makes life a little bit easier. Now the other item that I have on here, uh, it's not by Gibby, but this is from SW Motec. This is the SW Motec micro tank bag. When I'm touring or going uh, on a long weekend away, I always like to carry a tank bag. Uh, it's essential for carrying uh, things like uh, your wallet, charging cameras and things like that. And also just to have uh, some change or something available for toll roads and toll booths as you go uh, through the motorway network in Europe. So that's the uh, the tank bag. It does connect on to the bike via a tank ring uh, on the fuel cap. So that's the uh, the tank bag I use. Okay, so inside the uh, top box on the back of the bike. Um, now I always like to have a go-to bag to carry into hotels. And by the way, this is a hotel type setup. So the other addition that sometimes I take when I'm camping uh, and I put either on the back seat or on top of the top box on the rack just here um, is my Overlander bag from Lone Rider. Now this is a 30 litre roll top bag that houses all my tent and camping equipment. Um, I'll pop a link in the top right hand corner just here. Uh, this is where I show you the bag initially. Uh, I've used it many times, it's a great bag. Take a look at that video if you've got time after this one. Um, but yeah, this setup that I'm showing you now is mainly for hotels and B&Bs and Airbnbs and things like that that I use. When I do go on a big tour, uh, I tend not to camp. Um, so I try to go hotels all the way. So let's get into it. Um, inside the top box, I have in the, uh, the cargo net at the, the top, I have a puncture repair kit. Now this puncture repair kit is one that I bought off sportsbikeshop.co.uk and it's from a company called pump.co.uk. Uh, in here, if you've got tubeless tires on your bike, uh, it gives you a full repair kit that you can repair a tire within five minutes on the side of the road. It's got lots of canisters, CO2 canisters for pumping up the tire. So that's a useful thing to have if you're touring. Um, the other thing I've got in here as well, if those canisters, or if you had a couple of punches and they're not enough to blow your tire up, this is a portable uh, air inflator, a little compressor. Uh, it's small, so I charge this up before I go on my trip just in case I need it or to check tire pressures. Now the go-to bag that I use is in my top box. So when I get to the hotel, I want a go-to bag with all my clothes in, toiletries, and that's about it really. So one bag I can take out of the bike into the hotel, very easy for a night and then come back and pop it back in. So I bought the Givi Explore Enjoy bag and uh, this is a 30 litre um, bag that just fits in perfectly to the top box like so. And that houses all of my clothes and is my go-to bag. So that's pretty much all I put in my top box. Uh, the tank bag, I normally have a lead coming out of the back of it into a USB socket on the dash of the bike and then I can charge phones or cameras or anything like that. Um, on the bike I do have a SP Connect wireless phone charger. So for my iPhone that's always charged and also I can use that as a sat nav as well as my Garmin XT that I have on the bike. 
One thing I'd say when you are going on any tour or camping trips or a long weekend, um, make sure you take uh, A, your keys for the bike, but always carry a spare set of keys. And uh, I always put the spare set of keys in my go-to bag in my top box so that uh, I have a spare set just in case you lose a key. If you've got a keyless ignition, like on the Triumph, I've got underneath the seat a Allen key and a spare battery for this uh, remote control for the keyless ignition. And I'll show you a picture just now of that underneath the uh, rear seat of the bike. On here, I also have my light lock X1 and also the core motor light lock that I always take on the trips. And also I'll show you those just now. These locks are probably the best in the industry. I found that with the X1 around the front wheel, the core moto then fits around, you know, a lamppost or something like that. And also I think this is the best setup. The X1 to try and get an angle grinder through uh, this device, uh, you would need to use two or three uh, grinding blades to get through one side. And then you've got to get through the other side to actually take this lock off. So I think they're the best in the industry and that's what I use for security when parking my bike outside hotels. One thing I would say is if you are booking hotels or Airbnbs, um, try and check with the owners or via booking.com, which is where I book all of my accommodation through. Um, you can always uh, ask them a question. Do they have secure parking for bikes, maybe a gated rear um, driveway or anything or a garage that you can use? Um, so when I'm selecting hotels via booking.com, I always try and uh, find something suitable. So on the right hand side top box of the bike, I also have a water bottle uh, just here. This is again a uh, Gibby adapter that I can put a, a stainless steel water bottle in. Um, I find this really good for just keeping extra water on the bike. I do put a bottle of water in the panniers also. Uh, if you're going on a hot journey, like I will be to Turkey this year, where I'll be taking in around nine countries. Uh, it's about a 5,000 mile trip there and back. Uh, I'll be carrying a lot of water um, with me. And uh, also I have a bladder in my, um, my new rucksack that I'll show you. So in the side cases, I have in the right hand side, um, I have a first aid kit in the net above. And uh, also these are good for putting uh, anything you want like hats or, you know, sunglasses cases or anything like that. But inside the cases, I've got some waterproof bags. These are the Gibby Storm bags. And uh, these are fully waterproof. Uh, sometimes you find with aluminium side cases that they're not very waterproof. So I carry those in each of these bags. And uh, items that I put in both of these boxes tend to be items that I don't need overnight in an overnight bag. That's why I have the go-to bag. Um, but things that I put in here are things like uh, a tool roll. So this tool roll, I have lots of different tools in here. Um, more than enough, really. Uh, I could probably change my brake pads on the road or do anything I need mechanically with this tool roll. Um, this one is a Roland Sands design by Krieger, and this will fit in one of my side cases. Now the side cases, with them being aluminium, they're fully lockable and uh, they've got some uh, strap holders on there so you could strap maybe a tent to the top of them or some extra luggage. But like I say, the main feature I love about these is they've got a carry handle on the top of them. Now onto helmets. So this is the Array Tour X4. Uh, this is a good uh, adventure style helmet. Um, when you're going abroad, if you're going to a hot country, you really want to make sure that you've got lots of ventilation. Some helmets have more ventilation than others. Uh, this one has quite a lot of ventilation, so it's great for that. I've also added a slightly smoked tinted visor to this one. Um, I wear glasses normally for long distance. So uh, to wear sunglasses, I do have a pair of prescription sunglasses, but I tend not to wear them. So this really comes in handy. And also you've got the peak on top just to uh, block the sunlight as well. Comms, I have a Cardo Pack Talk Bold on the side, which I can listen to my sat nav, play music, listen to podcasts, which I do frequently when I'm on, you know, motorways and uh, long journeys. 
Uh, on the front I've got my camera set up. If you've watched other videos you know what setup that is. So I'll be filming the trip and bringing you lots of episodes. Um, yeah, but that's my go-to helmet for my touring on the Triumph Tiger. Now I mentioned the other bit of luggage. Um, this is the Krieger T9 rucksack. Uh, this is a 9 litre rucksack. Uh, they also do an 18 litre rucksack and bigger rucksacks. I don't like wearing rucksacks when I'm uh, on a bike. Um, just don't like the weight on my back. Hence why I have the side panniers and things to put most of the heavy luggage in. Why I wanted this one was because the Turkey trip will be going through um, France, Germany, uh, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Dubrovnik, uh, Albania, Greece, and then on to Turkey. It's going to be hot. It's going to be 30 plus, 36 degrees most days. So I need lots of water. So I bought this really just because it has a water bladder in the back. And also you've got the pipe there for uh, drinking your water. Um, but the mechanism that this connects together with, the harness, uh, really takes that weight off your back. The water bladder in this is a three litre, so it's not too heavy. Um, also you see on the front here, I've got strapped to it my Garmin InReach 2. This is just a satellite device. It's got an SOS button on the side. It enables me in countries where, or areas where you don't have a phone signal, that I can then text my wife or family and let them know I'm all right. But also I use it just um, in case for the SOS button on the side, so for an emergency only. Um, so that's the rucksack, that's the Krieger T9. But the Krieger stuff is very good. I've got quite a bit of that. Now I mentioned the cameras on the uh, helmet. I'll be having one on the bike also. They're all by DJI. Uh, they're all DJI Action 4 cameras. Um, one thing I will be taking on the trip is my new drone. And that again is from DJI. And this is the uh, Mini Pro. So small drone. But what I have done this time is I've gone for the updated controller with the screen on it. This also has a connection on the back that can then fit onto my handlebars uh, so that the drone can follow my bike along and give you some nice shots. So uh, that's something new and uh, hopefully we can get some good shots on the trip. Now for motorcycle clothing. Um, this is really what I wear on the trip. The main thing is that I normally wear a t-shirt. Then I wear an airbag vest. This airbag vest is from Climb. This is the one I wear every ride that I go on any motorcycle. Um, this airbag vest, as I say, is from Climb. It's got the airbag from in and motion inside. It's got an electronic brain. And yeah, I just charge this up every three nights or something like that on the tour. And uh, that keeps me safe as I go along. Now for jackets and pants and gloves and boots and things that I wear on trips like this, I normally take two jackets. Um, one jacket for very hot weather. This is the Merlin Shenstone jacket. It has mesh panels uh, on the front, the arms, and also all down the back as well. Merlin are a UK company. I really like their gear. I have quite a lot of it, but it's good quality gear. And uh, I just love these jackets for summer. Um, they let plenty of air through, so ventilation is key. So that's my go-to summer jacket. For winter, or spring or temperatures up to about uh, 22 degrees, something like that. Um, then I'll wear my Alpine Stars. Uh, this is the Ketchum jacket in the green to match the khaki green from the motorcycle. Now this is a Gore-Tex jacket. It has lots of uh, vents and things that you can open. It also has a liner inside as well that you can take out. Um, so this will be the jacket that I'll use to get down probably into France before I switch over in the hotter climates to the Merlin Shenstone jacket. Now gloves on the trip, I always take two pairs of gloves. Um, the gloves are both by Merlin. These are the waterproof gloves um, that I take. Uh, they're not too padded, so they're, they're good for spring and early summer. Um, but if you do get caught in the rain, you want some waterproof gloves. So these are the Merlin Ranton 2 gloves. They've got D3O armor on the knuckles and uh, yeah, that's my go-to glove for when it gets a little bit colder or it rains. Okay, so apart from the winter gloves, which are the Ranton 2s, 
We have the new just out. These are the Dura Air D3O in the knuckles. And uh, I've gone for the color black and the green in between the fingers to match obviously the motorcycle. These gloves are mainly mesh. So for summer, they'll be absolutely brilliant for a hot trip to Turkey. So you can see there, nice uh, armor on the knuckles. And then you've got the, uh, the mesh with the leather palms. Um, there are short gloves, so perfect for summer. And then you've got a cuff Velcro just there. Let's put the other one on. Like I say, I've just got these. These are brand new out from Merlin. And these are the Dura Air gloves. So uh, they'll be great for my trip too. Now boots. What do I wear when I go on big trips? Now, if it's on a long weekend or somewhere cooler and uh, maybe UK, for instance, on a camping trip, I'll take my Alpine Stars Cortisol boots. These are the Dry Star uh, oiled uh, brown boot. Very nice boot, um, but I feel they might be a little bit too warm for a summer trip. So for the trip, I used these others last year. Um, and these are the J6 waterproof boots. They're kind of a, a semi tall boot, um, but they're really, really comfy. Sizing's good on them also. They're fully waterproof. And uh, you know, if you're in a town and you want to go off the bike for a walk around or something like that, you want something to be comfortable. These J6 waterproof boots from Alpine Stars are great. I love them. Um, so that's my boot selection. And those will be coming with me on the Turkey trip, not the big boots. Now, comfort on the bike. Um, I have a low seat on my Tiger. I find that it's a bit more flatter, uh, perfectly comfortable. But also, uh, you can get hot spots on your backside when in hot countries and riding through heat. When I was at the Adventure Bike Festival, I saw a company called Cool Covers, and they make a seat cover, which is made up of uh, like a nylon material. It's about five millimeters thick. And what this does, it goes over your seat by Velcro straps. And then it actually uh, helps to get cool air under your backside. Um, two things it does, it gives you cool air under your backside, but also it makes the bike a little bit comfier on those long journeys. So when it gets to summer, that goes back on the bike and uh, definitely need it for something like a big trip to Turkey in summer. So we've talked about jackets and gloves and things like that that I'll be wearing on a big trip. One thing I, I do wear in the UK and pretty much all year is my jeans from Roadskin. Again, another UK company. Uh, these are the Tyrannis AAA rated jeans from Roadskin. Um, I wore these to my uh, trip to Italy last year and uh, they were great. The only thing that I did find is when temperatures got above 35 degrees and the sun's blazing down on you, they do sit a little bit close to your skin, which is a good thing for motorcycle jeans, but they did get a little bit hot in the sun. Now for the other pair of pants that I'll be wearing, I've just recently bought from Sports Bike Shop. Uh, these are the Airwave 3 trousers. So these are a textile pant, but they've also got the mesh panels uh, all down the front of them as well. So except for the knee section, obviously. Um, but these are really great and really light. So I'll be using those in the, uh, the big temperatures um, that get over 30s. And some people have said, Nick, but they're black, won't they absorb the heat? Um, well, actually it works the opposite way. Um, if you've ever seen some, um, you know, overseas countries where people wear black a lot in hot countries, uh, the reason for that is that black absorbs the moisture and the heat away from your skin. Whereas uh, if, it, if they were white, then uh, white reflects, so that would reflect the heat back onto your body. Um, so that's the reason behind it, so I believe. Um, so those are my new pants that I'll be using on the trip. I'll give you a full report how those do. Now, obviously, when you're traveling abroad, you need your passport. So I keep my passport nice and secure in the tank bag. Um, I also carry uh, cards and also I take uh, some euros with me um, along the way. I normally carry about 200 euros on most European trips just in case. I have come across some cafes that don't accept cards. In most countries, it's illegal now not to do that. Um, but that's the way the world lives at the moment. So, uh, yeah, so I carry... Uh, normally, 
a credit card. This is by Revolut, and uh, this credit card has an annual fee, as most do. But this is actually a top-up credit card, and uh, that's the one that I take with me. So I put all of my holiday money um, on there that covers fuel, hotels, and expenses um, for the trip, and use one card. Now, I have found some countries, if you take a debit card, which I always do, and another credit card just in case, um, but if you use your debit card in some of the petrol stations, they will take a, uh, a set amount off the card as a holding fee. So even if you only put £50 of fuel in, they might take more as a holding fee off your card, and then that takes away your spending money. So if you use one of these, um, I've been using this for all of my bike trips over the last few years, all of my family holidays and things that I go on. Um, it's great, it works with an app on your phone as well that you can convert currency um, and uh, do a lot of things, uh, even book accommodation through the app and get really good discounts as well. One thing about this Revolut card, it also covers me and uh, includes holiday insurance and travel insurance as well. That's why I have it. So that's my go-to card for holidays. Now, um, on the subject of uh, V5 logbooks, um, always take your original logbook. I have a little uh, sealable folder here, and inside here I carry uh, my V5. Uh, I carry a couple of copies of that. I carry my motorcycle insurance and a couple of copies of that too. Um, sometimes insurance companies send you it via an email to your mobile phone. That's fine, the police will accept that, but I always try and get printed copies just in case. Keep them in a sealed uh, bag, and always that one needs to go in your overnight bag, so it's never left on the bike, and uh, always you know where it is then. So pretty much the essential item that I never forget. Also money, credit card, and passport. The other thing I would say is, um, while I'm on trips, I do answer emails when I get to certain cafes or lunch stops and things like that. And um, I do wear an Apple Watch, but I find that the Apple Watch keeps giving me notifications. And yes, I know you can switch those off, but just when you're traveling, you don't really want to be distracted while you're doing your riding bits. So what I would suggest is maybe don't wear an Apple Watch or just, uh, you know, if you use one, turn the notifications off and then tend to look at it at lunch stops or when you get to your hotel at night to do bits and things that you need to do. I tend to now not wear my Apple Watch on my trip, and I tend to wear a normal watch, so um, that works for me. Now, for clothing, what do I take? Well, like I mentioned, whether it's a, uh, a long weekend or a two-week trip, I take exactly the same items in my go-to bag, and that consists of three to four T-shirts, a pair of jeans for nighttime, and a pair of trainers. Socks and pants, that's it. I take a pair of sunglasses that I keep in my tank bag, and I, uh, I do take a baseball cap as well uh, for when I'm walking around during the day, um, just to keep the sun off my, my face. Uh, and also, if you're going on a hot country like that, you might want to take some sunblock and uh, sunscreen. The key thing is, on any trip, make sure you've got water, uh, drinking water on your bike. Stop at a garage, pick up a bottle, pop that in your panniers, you've always got water then. Have a good trip. Don't fret about, oh, maybe I've forgotten this, or maybe I need another t-shirt. As long as you've got money and your wallet, there's plenty of shops en route. Um, I find that Europe is pretty much the same as this country. There's lots of gas stations, lots of shops, lots of supermarkets en route. And uh, yeah, the key thing is just to relax, go, have a great time, look at the scenery, look at the beautiful different cultures that are out there in the world today. Um, I absolutely love touring. One of the questions I always get is, Nick, why do you tour on your own? Do you not uh, go with friends or are you Billy No Mates? I love touring on my own, always have done. I think that it gives me so much flexibility to be able to stop where I want. Obviously, I'm recording videos for the channel, so uh, that helps so I can stop, film what I want, and I'm not holding other people up on the journey. But also, I get to do what I want, um, which is key. Now on the big Turkey trip, like I say, I'm going through lots of countries. One thing I will have to get, I think for a couple of those countries, especially Turkey, is what they call a green card off my insurance company, because my insurance won't cover me for Turkey, with it being outside of Europe. So yeah, I'm gonna give my insurance company a call, maybe a month before or two months before, see if they can give me a green card. There might be a fee involved, 
Um, but make sure you've got things like that if you're going into countries that are not governed by uh, European Union. And that's about it really. Now the other couple of things that you might want to take with you as well, obviously it's your preference, what you need on a trip, but uh, another key essential thing is a multi-adapter. Uh, this adapter's got uh, plenty of different European standard plugs for all different countries wherever you're going. So with it being a multi-country uh, trip, uh, I will take that adapter and then I can charge my phone at night, I can charge my cameras. And with that adapter, I take a three socket USB uh, charging adapter with me. But I do take a couple of uh, different bags. Again, these are from Krieger and uh, I use this one just to carry uh, my charging cables and leads. These can be found on the Krieger website. And uh, the larger one actually has my iPad inside, like so. And I take my iPad and also I put that in my go-to bag, as well as my charge leads and my charger and adapter, so that I can edit videos and download footage onto my iPad. And then uh, when I get home, normally I then start making the videos up from the trip. Now I do get questions as well with all of the video footage that I take. Um, iPads only have so much memory on them and storage. So uh, what else do I take? Well, I, I do take a product. This is a SanDisk. This is one terabyte of storage. Literally via lead, I can plug that into my iPad and drop all the footage onto here and segment it into different days, different files. And then when I come to edit my footage at the end of the uh, trip, I have it all on the, uh, the sand disk just there. So I don't need to take too many SD cards with me. So that's one of the items. Uh, the other essential item, if you're doing a lot of motorway work, which you probably are doing in between getting to places sometimes, uh, I tend to try and stay off the motorways unless it's a very boring country that I'm going through, Northern France, I'm not particularly fond of, um, but I always take ear plugs with me. And in this little case, I have the standard um, little ones you can buy from Halfords or anywhere, just the foam ones. Uh, but I always have my other custom fit guards made these for me. And these are molded to my ear. Uh, they come in a little pouch and uh, those take all the, uh, most of the, uh, the nasty decibels so that uh, on motorways it doesn't damage my hearing. Uh, so those are the other two items that I take with me on the trip. And yeah, that's my go-to gear, guys, for a long weekend away on the Tiger or a three-week, four-week trip to Turkey, taking in eight to nine countries en route. So looking forward to this trip. Um, it's been in the planning for a couple of years now. Been threatening to do a big trip. Um, the plan is set off, take my time getting down to Turkey, maybe six, seven days, taking all of the sites. I've never been to Croatia, Slovenia, Montenegro or Albania before. So those are new countries for me. So I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, when I get down to uh, Bodrum in Turkey, I'll be taking a uh, five or six day break with the family who will be flying out there prior. Uh, have a little bit of a family holiday, a bit of a break off the bike after all those days and miles. Uh, it's about 2,450 miles to get down to Bodrum from UK. And then on the way back, I'll take a different route. I've actually not planned that yet. Um, I tend to plan my route roughly and then day by day, just night before in the hotel, pick a nice road. And then, yeah, just head back via a different route. It's back to the UK. Uh, I've not set a time limit for this trip. Pretty flexible with work and things. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna really enjoy it. It's one of those lifetime trip experiences that I've always wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I feel that I'm uh, ready for it now. Uh, I've done quite a bit of touring over the last 10 years throughout Europe, uh, but this trip really means something a little bit special for me. So uh, yeah, I hope you'll tune in to the channel, follow those trips. Uh, I think the first videos from that series will probably be towards the end of October, and then I'll spread uh, however many videos there are of that trip out throughout the, uh, the following months. Uh, so it'll be good to see some of those in winter, give you some inspiration for the following summer next year as well. So yeah, thanks again. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, appreciate if you can give the video a big like, guys. Thank you. Thanks.